Hi guys, welcome back. Let's continue with our tax maker application. In this model, we're going to be integrating the detail activity and a standard settings activity with the toolbar. We're actually going to uh, start from where the settings activity is going to be launched and also the tax detail activity. Right then, the on options item selected from the main activity. Uh, we get to inflate the ID, the action settings, where you could uh, also add other uh, ID parameters. In the action settings, an intent is being triggered to the settings activity class. We, whereby you start an activity and pass the intent object as its parameter. Cool. This is going to st start up the settings activity, which houses a fragment right inside the activity. What about the detail activity? This has been triggered from the on item click of each recycler view items. And uh, the URI is also passed along with the intent as the set data, if you could see that right here. This URI is predominant or is specific to a particular tax which was clicked. We'll get to uh, integrate the URI uh, in the detail activity where you're going to actually use that to call uh, the content resolver to actually fetch data based on the URI value. From here, I'm going to be set start, starting up with a settings activity and uh, we're going to look at all how the integration goes and also some other aspects of the drawable, the layout, the menu and even the arrays needed for these. In the XML, we have the prefix.xml where you're going to have the list prefix because we actually are uh, sorting uh, based on two order. Uh, first is sort by uh, the due date and at the same time is by the default. That's a default value which you have right there. So you have the key as the sort and the summary. What about we have the entry values? The entry values are from the preference sort by values which we're going to see right there in the arrays.xml. In the arrays.xml, we have the list preference display values, uh, where we have the sort by the default value and sort by the due date, which is the, uh, the due date value. So you add, firstly have the label before the values. So the values is just like the list preference led values, which actually depicts what the label uh, is actually uh, pointing at so you have that set up and you'll be having that right there in the string XML where we will have to set the preference sort by default label with the value and also uh, which we have right there preference sort by the key sort by the default value and sort by the due date so you have that as sort default and due so you're going to actually be sorting in two forms by the default value and uh, by the due date Cool. From here, let's look at the menu uh, because right then the menu, uh, we have to actually uh, add up some aspects to the toolbar, uh, which we have the set reminder and the delete stacks, which you're actually going to uh, be handling in the detail activity. Cool. So you could delete a tax, you could delete all tax, and at the same time, you could set a reminder from the detail activity. In the layout, we have the tax details, uh, that's for the details activity. And uh, in the drawable, we have the ISO delete XML because it's actually coming in uh, a vector graphics. That's why you have it in, an, in XML. And also the reminder XML, just like what you're seeing, these icons are the delete and the reminder XML. Now, looking at the tax details, this is actually the detail page. I'm actually explaining the two together, the settings and the details. Uh, this is the detail where you get to have, uh, let's say, uh, more metadata of uh, the tax. Firstly, you have the description of the tax and uh, followed by its due date. And uh, you have a layout, a linear layout wrapped around an image, which is actually depicting uh, the priority, either of high priority or of no priority. So that's just the details you have it. But right there on the toolbar of the detail, you get to have uh, the delete and the reminder. Cool. We'll move further from there. Now we're going to be going straight down to its act 
to its uh, classes and uh, we'll see how the logic flows. In the settings activity, uh, we have it very simple. This extends the app compact activity and uh, you have to replace with a fragment. An activity replaced with a fragment, that's a fragment right inside an activity. So that's just going to give a standard look of a settings with toolbar. That's a standard way of uh, creating out the settings in Android application. It must have its uh, toolbar, just like all other activities. You get the fragment manager, you bring in transaction, and you replace with the settings fragment. You have that uh, cool, and you commit up. So we're going to actually be looking at the settings fragment after this. The settings fragment houses uh, the full logic of the settings. And we're actually going to be using some of the shared preference value from the settings uh, to actually uh, populate the data in the main activity to make the sort order. So let's get to see how we'll actually extend this. It extends the preference fragment and implements the unpreference change listener. This is a listener that actually uh, is going to be triggered anytime you change values. Probably you change from the default sort order to uh, the due date or vice versa. So there's going to be a listener to this uh, state. In the onCreate method, you have to add the preference from the resource, which is the preference XML. I've explained that earlier. And uh, you have to find the preference, which is the sort by key. It's key. It's always in key value pairs, just like any other shared preference values. And you need to bind the preference summary to the value, which is the order by of the key. We get to, we'll get to look at the bind preference summary uh, underneath. Uh, but firstly, now let's look at the unpreference change when there's a change in uh, the values. What's going to happen is going to actually test for an instance of the list preference because that's what we actually use in the preference XML, uh, the leaks. And uh, you're going to uh, get the string value, you find the index of the value, and you test if it's actually greater than or equals to zero. And uh, you get the character sequence of the entries so that's what uh, you're going to set down to the summary uh, based on its index so cool else it's going to set the summary to the string value without uh, no change but once there's a change there's going to be a toggle or a tweak in that in the binds preference summary to value uh, this takes a preference object as a parameter it sets the unpreference change listener to this object and at the same time uh, you instantiate the shared preferences to get the default shared preference that's get the context is going to get the value of the key so if you notice we have the key the get key which is the uh, and its corresponding value will be populated right inside here. so it's actually going to get the value of the particular key uh, which is the label of that particular uh, preference so cool and on preference change is going to actually change the value as well and passing the preference string into there so it's going to call this method and the character sequence will actually get that changed. So once there's a new value for that key or for another key, cool. So this is the standard way to actually set up a settings activity uh, with a fragment right inside it. You could have different kind of uh, settings uh, uh, attributes. This is a list preference. We have the uh, check buttons. Uh, we have the toggle. Uh, we have the switch. So we have different form of uh, settings uh, attributes that you could use uh, to actually keep uh, data persistently which could actually uh, have a change in the flow of your activity or of your application so cool we are only using the list preference here from here i will get to look at the detailed activity in the detail activity uh, we're going to actually see how we're going to consume the uri and afterwards, uh, we're going to uh, get that uh, sorted up. Uh, but right at this point in time, I would like to launch to the emulator so that that will be running before we actually complete this video. We'll have the application set up right there in the emulator. Cool. Now, the tax detail activity extends the app from pack activity and it implements the date picker dialog. There's a listener on the dialog and the loader manager with its callback you'll wonder why we are using the loader manager again uh, because we're actually passing the uri as the set data or let's say uh, we're putting uh, some extras which is the uri from the main activity 
uh, which is actually handling from the adapter down to the detail activity. So with that, we're going to use the URI to call the content resolver to actually fetch data based on that URI value. So that's why we are still using the loader manager, which is actually going to happen right there at the background. Cool. In the onCreate method, the tax must be passed to this activity as a valid provider URI. That's the URI we're expecting. Uh, you get that uh, from the get intent and get data. So you pass the value to the tax URI. Now you have the URI of data of, of a valid link to a to the directory right there in the content provider, which will get access to the SQLite database. Cool. The tax description, uh, the due date, and the priority, those are the view we want to actually set values to, the text view and the image view. Now you have to check firstly uh, if the tax URI is not equal to null. If it's not equal to null, you could trigger the loader manager uh, so that it's actually going to start fetching data based on that uh, value. So, so that's cool. And uh, we're going to actually uh, move further. And uh, right there in the on options item selected of the detail activity, we have the reminder and we have the action to delete. Cool. We've actually set that out right there in its uh, menu eczema. But now we need to implement this. If you should notice, uh, this is actually going to run once there is a click on the action reminder icon right there in the toolbar. What's going to happen is going to call the date picker fragment and is actually going to uh, set uh, the value. That's the day, the month, and probably time. So with this, uh, the reminder could trigger out. We'll get to look at when we actually trigger the reminder. Uh, at the point of the action delete, once you click on that, the delete tax method is going to run. So we're going to actually look at the content of that uh, right there now. In the delete tax, what's going to happen? We still text for the tax URI, which uh, is, the is the intent that is being passed right there to the detail activity. And at this point in time, you call the get content resolver that we want to communicate with the uh, content provider. And this time, we're going to trigger the delete method. We've actually implemented the CRUD implementation in the content provider. We're going to be using the delete method. We've used the read. We've used the create and we've even used the update in the uh, main activity. Now we're going to use the delete uh, method. Now you have the tax URI. Definitely, you just want to delete a particular tax, not all tax. And uh, you pass that as a parameter right there. And you need to return uh, the rows that's been deleted. So if the rows deleted, just to check, is actually zero. It's called uh, deleting tax. Uh, else, it's going to be successfully deleted. So uh, you have that just to. Uh, be sure if you have the tax deleted or not so that's gonna gonna post down to the user so that's set up now on the date set for the date picker the date picker needs this a calendar object the year month day and the time i think i've mentioned that and uh, it's get that to milliseconds because that's what you're going to pass down to the reminder so we're going to talk about the reminder in the next video uh where we're going to actually use the alarm manager to undo this uh uh, calendar instance so you're gonna have to uh, have to do that uh, with it you set the date selection which is triggered right there in the on date set it takes the selected timestamp as a parameter which is the get time in milliseconds of the calendar instance and I pass that right there into this method selected timestamp will now be the due date and uh, the time you're trying to look at the current time in milliseconds and uh, if the due date is less than you want to know Probably that is, uh, if the due date gets less than uh, the time, that means the tax alarm cannot be set at the past date. So you can't set the alarm to a date that has been that has been passed. So that's uh, why uh, that is actually uh, set up that way. And you have to show up. Now, if it's not, you're going to trigger the alarm scheduler. We'll get to talk about this. That's why I commented this out. We'll get to talk about it in the next video. Oh, cool. Now we need our loader. Uh, what do we need our loader to? To actually fetch the data so we could actually bind down to the view we actually initialize in the onCreate method. We have the projection, this don't create loader. Uh, anytime you extend, uh, you implement the loader manager, you have to override three methods the onCreate loader, the onload finish, and the onloader reset. We all know that by now. Uh, the selection clause argument is sort order or null since we are not passing a specific uh, sort and selection. Uh, column 
so you return the cursor loader based on the tax URI and on load finish what we're going to do with the value we try to extract the value that's why we have to use the cursor move to first majorly you only see this in the detail activity but at this point in time we're going to be using it right there in the load finish because we need to extract values from that uh, cursor now you get the column index of the description the due date this is parity these are the columns we needed and you get the value you pass that to these variables which you've actually created up here as the global scope you have that string int and long cool once you have once you pass those values down to the variable uh, you could now set them to the view so you just have to set them to the view it's not actually coming out in list because it's actually going to be one value that's why we actually you could just set that up set the text the tax description you set it to the tax description text view which you have here and uh you could you could also uh set the image resources now if the priority you got is equals to zero that means it's of no priority that's why you have to set the uh, empty uh, star but once it's one you have to set the full star that means there's a priority set because we the, the priority uh, column you only have two values it has zero one and now uh, uh, for the max for the due date we could see how we could actually set the due date if the get selection date selection is maximum value that means definitely we don't have a due date set uh, down to the column you set the due date to be empty so no due date but if it has, uh, we have to have a format. Uh, what about we we'll get the relative time span string? That's the format we're going to use to set the due date to set that appropriately. So on load finish, the values will be set to the view, and on loader reset, we might not need any implementation here. So cool, we have a robust detail page, uh, which I would like us to actually look around and uh, fill ourselves with. Now we we'll get to look at the manifest. In the manifest, we need to add up the activity used and uh, firstly you add up the tax detail activity over here and uh, the update service that was used as well you need to add that up into the manifest which is the metadata of the application